No game for Southampton this weekend, of course, with the international break. But there's still football at St Mary's today with a charity match going on. Kim Kathari is there for us and has been speaking to a former Southampton and England star. Yeah, I'm here at St Mary's where the Russell Martin 11 are taking on the Saints Legends 11. And I'm delighted to say I'm joined by Theo Walcott. Theo, how are you? I'm very well, yes. Uh, I'm, I'm pleased you're speaking to me before the game because I can breathe right now. But yeah, I am very excited to obviously be part of the day, Russell Foundation, Saints Foundation. It's uh, really good causes. So yeah, it's, uh, it's nice to be back at St Mary's as well. I've got to say, seen you doing some shooting, still got it, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, I, I do, yes. <laughs> no, you don't really lose it. It's, of course, it's just, you know, the repetition. You know, it comes to when you're on the football field, it's like you're a kid again, you know. So, look, it's just nice to maybe sort of share some, some memories of, of being at St Mary's and just hopefully I can uh, bless the field with some of these guys here today. And a difficult start for Southampton's um, first 11. Why do you think that is? What do you think the problems have been this, so far this season? I wouldn't say there's, there's problems. There's a way of playing, and obviously Russell Martin has that way and that got them to the Premier League at this moment in time. I'm sure at some point there, there will be situations when they adapt, but for me, it's really early in the season still. You always learn after losses. I mean, I would know that at all when I was at St Mary's at Southampton before. We always would learn after a defeat. So I'm sure the players would have a good look at themselves. Look, it's still early season, still plenty of games to play for. The confidence will breathe through the team, I'm sure of that. But they've got some nice young players coming through. Obviously, Tyler Dibbling, you know, I actually shared the field with him a few times at uh, Asanda when he came up the ranks. And uh, it's another one from the academy which, you know, we've got to be very proud of because they've, they've built some very good players. Yeah, I was going to mention that. Obviously, like yourself, a winger coming up here. How far do you think you can go in the game? Look, it's one of those where you always need to be a bit cautious on players that come through but look he's already shown signs at such a young age of how confident he is and how free he wants to play and I always feel like that's the, the gift that Simon always give is the freedom they allow the young players to come and express themselves and they get rewarded and he's getting rewarded right now. And aside from being an ex-Saints player also an ex-England international England taking on Finland very very shortly what have you made of Lee Carsley's reign so far? Look it's one of those we all you know I was at the game uh, midweek and yeah it was for me, I, I always want to see a number nine. I always do. And it's one of those. I'm pretty sure everyone was crying out to play all these players during the summer that Gareth didn't. And there was a way why he didn't. And I just feel like friendlies are there to try things. It didn't quite work. He would have learned from this, just like I said about Southampton players learning from, should we say, a mistake or whatever. But it's one of those. It will make him into a better man, a better manager. He knows you know, what, who he trusts, what his team will be going forward, because it didn't quite work. But look, it's one of those. You've got to give credit and bravery to trying it because some some managers won't try that and in terms of the England wingers it seems like Saka's pretty much cemented his spot on the right wing Gar um, Gareth Southgate chose Phil Foden on the left Lee Carsley's gone uh, for Anthony Gordon yep. who do you think should cement that spot good to speak Lee Carsley's the best man for that sort of answer look I'm a big believer in, in I don't want too many similar players and I think at times Anthony Gordon he will stretch the field create space for the players that like to come in those pockets and, and provide those assists and their link-up play. So for me, look, it's, it's not for me to pick, but I always like to see pace and we've got so many options. There's no wrong answer. I think it's probably Phil Fonin would say himself that he's not a left winger, but look, he puts an English shirt, he'll play wherever he's told and he'll do a job because he's that sort of professional player. Just a final two from me on Bukayo Saka. A little bit of an injury worry, but it's supposed that he'll be playing next weekend against Bournemouth. Do you think he's Arsenal's most important player? I think you look at the amount of football he's played and he is, tends to be the first man on that field. He's played a lot of football. We need to be cautious of the, obviously these little injuries that have sort of developed, these little issues coming off. But, look, arguably he is, I suppose. I, I look at that, that Arsenal team. It's, um, they've got a, very, a lot of important players. But, look, they are they're adapting to situations. Where, when, for instance, Martin Odegaard, for me, is questionably one of the best players in, the, in that team as well. So, look, it's, a, it's up for debate. And I have to ask you, Rodri injured for the season. Is this Arsenal's year? I, I think I do believe that it could be Arsenal's year. I really do. I've said this at the start of the season. It's going to be interesting, be tough. But look, I think they would have learned a lot. And it's important not to mess up, should we just say, in the, the lesser games, put it that way.